the substance is confused, the compare calculated uh, using the incorrect method, um, the error went down to 100 to 200 octane. So it was just a huge, dramatic, unequivocal improvement in that regard. So no question about that. Now that was a very specific phenomena where it was a redox reaction changing the number of electrons on the transition metal. It's great for that because it's supposed to be localized. CFC doesn't do it well enough. Uh, it really fixes double counting problems that are, that are there. In some cases, it's really great like that. On the flip side, I think when you begin to talk about formation energies, now you're two very different states. You're forming FeO, you form it from iron uh, in a metallic state, then it becomes much less clear. There's actually a very extensive study done by Jan Grossmeyer, which I think will come out soon, on four or five different structures of oxide hundreds calculation, benchmarked against experiment. Uh, it doesn't use you at all. It does a great job. Maybe I can, can ask one question that was a part of this. We touched on this, you've touched on this, obviously yourself, um, but I think it's very helpful to have experts like yourself from the community to tell us in the mineral community. Um, the question is, uh, when you're comparing, if you're doing a phase transformation and you've got two different phases, each one should have its own U's, are you better off calculating two totally different self-consistent U's, which may differ by an EV, an EV and a half, which introduces all sorts of potential errors and double counting corrections and things like that? Or are you better off using a kind of average consistent use between the two to avoid those types of errors but to suffer the fact that you're not quite using the correct use by the phase? Yeah. And, and do we have a, a test rather than just an opinion? <laughs> <laughs> so I've done both. <laughs> so I'm not sure what, what the right things um, is. Uh, so in the case of battery, for example, we were using just the same U across the uh, all lithium concentration materials. Uh, uh, I, and uh, for other cases uh, with, uh, with Renato, we use different ones. Yeah. Uh, I guess it depends uh, um, on, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, on how similar, uh, it goes back to the, to the previous comment you were making. Uh, on how similar things you're comparing are, in a sense, uh, if the, the raw metal, for example, or uh, one is metal, one is transition metal, uh, this approach, because of limited flexibility still, doesn't work as well for, uh, for whatever material you may have. Okay, so... Um, so you may No, you can afford using a more precise evaluation of uh, of you. Oh, so, so when they're more similar, you would say you gain more by using a more precise evaluation. So I, I would. If you're doing a spin transition where maybe things are very similar, yeah. you might say there's a good time to really get you correct. I would say so. If you're changing valence state, maybe there it's less. Yeah. That, that's my impression. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Um, Yeah. 
right as in philosophically unpleasant, or not right as in doesn't give the right answer? Well, uh, it's, not, it's not right because the procedure is established. I mean, it's how to review. And if, if you do how to review, you should review there is an adverse situation. It but changes the situation. I just asked the man to so, so, so no, let, let me let me spend some words on this. I mean, the, the problem comes down comes down to to assessing uh, how much you correct the the DFT um, basic approximation or DFT uh, electronic structure. For example, um, you know that uh, sometimes you with this uh, the straight application of DFT plus U you overestimate the downshift of uh, field states it might not be uh, very very accurate so if uh, if that is important I mean if uh, in some system that doesn't have a big effect in terms of energy in some other it might have and uh, it comes down I mean it goes back to to the fact that it's not flexible that the, the function is not flexible enough um, might not be flexible enough even if you use the same procedure or uh, you compute you the same way uh, to you know to to give the same quality of answer for both material you, whose energy you're comparing um, you know using the same U somehow uh, allows you to use that cancellation of errors that uh, that you enjoy in a standard DFT uh, approach that is my trying to undo the nice result from my Jacobo paper of using substances that you did see that like the uh, but on the other hand that's a horrible test system because it's so complex. So it might be nice to take, you know, ten systems where we really know the answer to some property, do them with self consistent U, do them with just do a little test like that. That was like a third of the the paper that says this works better than this. Battery relax potentials are known extremely well, right? And there's 15 of them or something, or 10, and they were better with a single U. Um, and they are very well. Obviously, they are predictable. Okay. It doesn't do well if you get it. If you like the procedure, you can get it. Yeah, I completely agree with that. But I'd say, given the procedure we have now, what's the best strategy? It's more the function, in my point, from my point of view, than the procedure needing uh, improvement. But um, I, I agree that the result might look like uh, what you're saying. Yeah. 